Hey guys, it's Tiffany from supereasymath.com. Today, you're gonna take a look at one of my older videos. This one's over negative decimals. This video was supposed to come out several years ago, but for whatever reason, life happened and I never released it. Anyway, I went and got it edited and got it looking good, so I thought you guys might enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna show you how to work with negative decimals. Negative decimal operations. Things you need to know when working with negative decimals are you need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals. You also need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers. Once you know those things, then you should be able to solve any of these problems without an issue. Here's example number one. I have one and four tenths plus negative one and three tenths. Okay, the last slide just told me in order to solve this, I need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals. I also need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers. Okay, so let's start with the rules for integers. Let's not focus on the fact that there's any decimals here right now. Let's just think about what I would do if I need to add integers. The ways that I showed you in my adding and subtracting integers video of mine are you can either use the absolute value method to figure out um, your answer or you can use the number line method. Although I'm usually a fan of the number line method because it's more logical and it's more realistic for just understanding what you're doing. For this example sometimes it's hard for people to visualize decimal points on a number line clearly so I'm gonna actually use the absolute value this time the absolute value rule says you need to find the absolute value of both numbers which is really easy is basically the positive form of the number meaning the number without a negative sign this one's already positive so the absolute value is gonna be one and four tenths for this one and this one is negative but we're just gonna take the negative sign off and it's gonna be one and three tenths for this one so next part of the rule says when the signs of the two numbers are different which they are in this case you need to subtract putting the number with the largest absolute value on top so the number with the largest absolute value would be the one and four tenths and I'm gonna put it on top when I subtract I need to put a one here my decimal and a four one here decimal and a three and this is where the rules for knowing how to subtract decimals come in handy when I subtract here I'm gonna get a one this is decimal is gonna stay and I get a zero over here so right now I have an answer of one tenth but if you remember we have to consider what sign this answer is gonna be and the sign always becomes the same sign that the number with the largest absolute value in this case the 1 and 4 tenth originally had in the original problem the 1 and 4 tenths is positive there's nothing in front of it that means it's positive so that means my answer is also going to be positive so that means my answer to example number one is 1 tenth so basically I used both things that I told you that you need to know to be able to solve this problem I used what I know for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of decimals. Okay, that's what happened over here. I had to use what I know for subtraction. And then I also used what I know for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing integers. And that's how I determined that the sign was going to be positive and how I knew that I was going to subtract initially because I had to follow those steps. So the answer to example number one is one tenth. Let's move on to example number two example number two this time we have a subtraction problem if you remember the rules for subtracting integers say that you need to take the sign change it to addition and add the opposite for that second term so I'm gonna rewrite this whole problem and add the opposite instead of subtract what it is so I'm gonna rewrite 12 and 7 tenths plus the opposite of negative 75 hundredths would be 
positive 7500 so I'm gonna write positive 7500 okay now I have an addition problem with integers see I got a negative sign out here so I need to follow those rules now I need to consider those rules remember I can either uh, find the absolute value work it that way or use a number line because we're dealing with decimals and typically people can't you know understand decimals on a number line so clearly let's just use the absolute value this time so the signs are different so that means we're gonna subtract the absolute values with the largest absolute value on top now I'm subtracting my decimals this is where knowing how to subtract decimals comes in handy because I need to know that I must line up my decimals I'm gonna add another zero in here just like I did on the end here just so my numbers are lined up very clearly now I need to know how to do this okay after I subtract I get 11 and 95 hundredths now all I need to do is figure out what my sign should be so the rule when we're using the absolute value rule for integers it says that I should keep the sign that the number with the largest absolute value had from the beginning and remember the number with the largest absolute value is going to be always the first number that you put on top when you're subtracting or if you're using a calculator it's going to be the number that you put in first so in this case it was the 12 and 7 tenths it was negative so my answer becomes negative so my answer is negative 11 and 95 hundredths so again just to recap because I know that was kind of a lot what I did was I considered the rules for subtracting integers and the rules for subtracting integers say that I need to add the opposite so that's how I got plus this positive 75 hundredths now I have a problem with a negative in it so this is going to be an addition rule for integers situation that I need to follow the rule for that says take the absolute value of the numbers subtract them because the signs are different get your answer and then your answer sign should be whatever your number with the largest absolute value originally had I know that's a lot of steps but when you know how to solve each of those types of problems individually it will feel smoother okay you're not gonna feel so stressed because literally just now I just explained like three or four different rules the subtraction of integers rule the absolute value rule knowing how the sign should determine you know that was a lot okay but knowing them individually is gonna help you let's move on to example number three example number three this time I'm multiplying okay the rules for multiplying integers if you remember we use the triangle guy or this is one method anyway kinda looks like a face looks like this this triangle says that when you're multiplying and dividing and I like to put my M and the D on the top so students remember that this only works for multiplication and division of integers or you know problems that have any type of negative problem is gonna consist of three parts two numbers that get multiplied together or divided together and your answer and that's what all of these symbols in here represent two of those numbers of the three numbers that you have must be negatives and one must be positive so in this case I have a negative number my three and two tenths is negative my one and four tenths is positive so that means my answer has to be negative because I have my negative one used up here my positive one used up here and I only have a negative left so I know before I even begin this problem that my answer is gonna be negative because of this rule now I'm gonna ignore this sign for a minute and just multiply my numbers okay just follow the regular old rules for multiplication so I could stack up my numbers like this three and two tenths times one and four tenths when I finish multiplying all of this out I'm gonna get four and forty eight hundredths this is supposed to be a decimal it looks a little bit like a comma it's not okay so four and forty eight hundredths 
but like I told you in the beginning I know that my answer is going to be negative so I just put it out there and so my answer to example number three becomes negative four and forty eight hundredths all I did was multiply which I skipped some steps I didn't show all of my details of multiplication here and I just put my sign negative let's move on to example number four example number four I have negative 24 divided by 8 just like I used on the last slide this guy there he is he looks sleepy multiplication and division is when we're gonna use this guy we're dividing so that's how I know before I even begin I already know that my answer is gonna be positive because I have a negative here so that uses up this one I'm gonna cross it off actually and I have a negative 8 here so that uses up this one and then I just have my plus sign left so that means this positive sign is gonna tell me the answer to my problem is gonna be positive so now I don't even need to worry about my negative signs and all I need to do is say 24 divided by 8 and that is 3 and positive means I don't need to write anything so the answer to example number 4 is 3 that was my last example. I hope this video helps you to understand how to work with negative decimal operations a little better. Thanks for watching. Did you find this video helpful? Well, you can get more help from me on my website, supereasymath.com. While you're there, you can pick up my top five math tips to make learning math easy.